What is Shaken Fire Nation? JLD in the house on this gorgeous Monday, April 20th. At least it's gorgeous here in San Diego, but nothing's too abnormal about that. But I'd love to hear where all of you wonderful Fire Nation-ers are in the world. Uh, so give me a little shout. Let me know that you can hear me loud and clear. Let me know where you're coming from. Let me know that you're excited for a little bit of special content that I have for you here today because uh, this is some cool stuff. You know, this is something that I spent a lot of time working on over the past few months. And I thought originally it was only going to be shared with Icon 15 and social media marketing world. But I said, hey, why, why do I think that? Why is that the case? It doesn't have to be the case. And so uh, let's see here. Let me give a little shout out to some peeps that are already here in the house. We have a uh, Sharni coming at us from Adelaide, Australia. What's up, Sharni? Welcome, welcome. We have the always ever present and studly Mel Abraham says, happy Monday. Just back from speaking in SFO. Uh, what's up, Mel? How'd the speaking gig go, my friends? Good to hear. Uh, we have JR Outlooks saying hello. What's up, JR in the house? Where are you coming from, my friends? Love that avatar. It's 8.17 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, April 21st. So, Sharni, you're coming at us from the future. I love it. And I guess it's a great time for Australians. So, uh, cool. Good to know for the future. Um, what's up, Steve's in the house. Jason Torres says, uh, doing great here on the East Coast, Charleston, South uh, Carolina. What's up, Jason? Welcome, welcome, my friends. Uh, we have Johnny Griffin saying, cooking some teriyaki chicken while getting my learn on. Johnny, that chicken sounds good. Today's actually one of my IF days, intermittent fasting. So uh, my mouth is already watering, my friends. But guys, let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Would love to know again where you're coming from, what you're, what you have going on right now. Like Johnny's teriyaki chicken. Maybe if we can refrain from the food, just because again, um, haven't haven't had a, any food yet today of substance. So uh, we'll see what's up there. We have uh, let's see. Oh, Johnny says he's a chubby fellow. Extra is subjective. Well, Johnny, maybe a little intermittent fasting for you as well. I'm enjoying it. Uh, JR Outlook says, just created a value ladder for business this weekend. Loving what Russell Brunson has as guide. JR, if you can expand upon that, I'd love to have you do so in the chat because I'm going to be talking about this for sure. But anything that you can add would be huge as well because I am in the same exact way. Um, Steve says, OMG, no pick, but sound, LOL. Guys, if you can hear my voice, um, you should definitely be able to see the sound as well, uh, see my little Welcome Fire Nation 5 zone. So hit the refresh button if you can, and then press the play button. Um, Paul says, can we Chromecast this? Absolutely, Paul, you can Chromecast anything. Joellen says, no pick here either. Guys, refresh and uh, hit the play button, and you should be able to see that. Zena Burr says, hey, John and Kate, glad to be here. What's up, Zena in the house? Uh, JR says, here, you're great. Kent says, Baltimore. What's up, Kent? Welcome from Baltimore. Mel is all clear in Monarch Beach. JR is from Kansas City. Steve says, yep. Steve says, that's what I see. So yeah, guys, if you can see the welcome Fire Nation, the five zones, then with me, with my arms and hair literally on fire, you're in the right place. You're seeing the right screen. If you don't, Hit the refresh button on your browser, then press the play button within the little video here, and you should be going to town. Jay Williams says, cheers from Barcelona. Jay Williams, how'd you like that, my friend? Pronouncing it correctly for you. Robert Martin says, Decatur, Alabama. Uh, Joe, Allen, Joe Allen says, Orlando, but can't see your nice faces. Uh, Joe Allen, you'll be able to in a second. I don't have the video on quite yet. We do have the... Uh, the Welcome Fire Nation thing should be there for you right now. Sharni says, thanks, John. What's up? What's up, Sharni? Not too much, girl. Mark Khan, or maybe it's Can, is from Chicago. Chloe is from Scotland. What's up? What time is it in Scotland? It must be late there, Chloe. Thanks for staying up for us. Um, the windiest of cities. Yes, that is the truth. Uh, we also have, let's see here. Um, JR says, thanks. Did that myself. Amateur. <laughs> uh, Kent says, thanks. You're welcome, Kent. 
And Paul Secor says, Chromecast, sending video to your TV via the Chromecast button on YouTube. You can definitely do that, Paul. Absolutamente. Robert Martin says, hi, Kate. What's up, Robert? Joe Allen says, we will be, will we be done before Dancing with the Stars starts at 8 p.m. on the East Coast? Um, yeah, we'll be done right at that point, Joe Allen, for sure. Uh, we have Darcy um, Frank Ogandada, uh, Ogandaga from here from Atlanta. What's up, Darcy? Thanks for joining us, brother. Appreciate. Um, JR says, personally, I think my, av her, my avatar is lacking, LOL. <laughs> uh, Steve says, just add chicken Oscar. I'm not sure if you meant Caesar, but Oscar sounds good too. Jake says, here in Indianapolis. What's up, Jake? In the house. Uh, ch 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 see here. We have Brian says, JLD, Chris Dunn, should he stay or should he go? Greetings from Boston via Camp GLP. Good life project. Brian, great question. And what's up? Um, love Boston and love Camp Good Life Project and Jonathan Fields. There's no, no, no question. Chris Dunn needs to stay. You know, he is, and for all of you who don't know, Chris Dunn's the uh, all American point guard from my alumni, Providence College. Um, he could go pro this year, but he needs to stay. He's only a sophomore. He needs one more year to refine himself. He'll be a lottery pick next year. But since you brought it up, Brian, go Providence Friars, Division I National Hockey Champions. We just won last weekend, defeating Boston University 4-3 to three in an unbelievably riveting game. I couldn't be more proud of my college, Providence College, for winning the national championship in hockey. Uh, PC Keenan says, hey, it's Patrick from Pacific Beach. What's up, Patrick? Thanks for joining us, brother. Just go ahead and turn the volume off. Open up your window. You'll be able to hear me loud and clear. Uh, Wesley says, can see it all. Smiley face. What's up, Wesley Chapman in the house, brother? Coming down to SD pretty soon here. Looking forward to it. Jennifer Marie, it's Jen, a.k.a. JFO from Jersey. What's up, Jennifer Marie? JFO in the house. We have Santis Webb saying, Tampa, Florida. Hello, John. What's up, Santis? Uh, we have Stephen Noel saying, Stephen from DC. What's up, Stephen? Thanks for coming. Bob Barr from San Juan Batista, California. What's up, Bob? Carol B from Humid St. Petersburg right now. Uh, we also have John P. Smith Jr. This is John P. from Pasadena, California. Love it. Chloe saying, it's midnight in Scotland, but totally worth staying up for. Chloe, I'm blushing. Ken says, go Army. You better believe it. Kent, love it. And uh, Johnny Griffin, another Tampa fella in the house. They're everywhere. It's a great city. Uh, Modger says Carmel Valley. What's up, Caden John? What's up, Modgers in the house? Santa says Florida in the house. Raphael says, hey, John, Raphael from San Diego. What's up, Raphael? We got San Diego in the house. We have Buenos Aires in the house from Golmos 79. What's up, Golmos? Um, the mountains of Lake Arrowhead. What's up, Wesley? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, buddy. Uh, Dennis Yu from Pasadena, P-Town. Bob Barr says, long distance, kind of love SD. <laughs> love it too. Courtney Bush from Central New Jersey here. Uh, Brian Davis says, hello all. We have Damian Ruiz from Calgary, Canada. 68 Fahrenheit is burning hot for us. Robert Martin, cheesy chicken and rice. Mmm, I'm hungry. Natisha says, hi everyone. Um, I Jeff says, greetings all. And uh, Jerry Mollett says, good day, all. What's up, Jerry in the house? Thanks for joining us, buddy. And Robert, hope you're enjoying that cheesy chicken and rice, my friend. And guys, we are well over 110 live attendees now. I mean, you know, I shot this email out this morning because I knew I just wanted to share some awesome content. And it's just awesome that over 110 and now 114, 15 people are here live to, uh, to just hang out and to get some great information, to get some great content, and to just be awesome in general. And that's what you're being right now. So thank you for that. Uh, we also have oh, Naisha saying, thanks, Kate. We have Tanya Fraser from Ontario, Canada. Um, Alton O. Williams from Fresno, California. What's up, Alton O.? Carol B. is Heat is turning up here now. It's been raining for a few hours, and it's cooling down. Thank goodness for the rain, Carol B. Well, listen, my friends, I want to start right on time. Um, I would love to hang out and just keep chatting as people come on in here, especially Mr. John Marshall from New Hampshire. 
a great state, almost as great as the wonderful state of Maine, the way life should be. But I'm going to go ahead and jump on in and uh, start this awesome presentation I have here for you that is called the five zones. But before I even do quite start that, I'm going to turn the video on because I want to just kind of say hello and let's see, I might have to adjust. Yep, going to adjust this just a little bit. But what is happening, my friends? I'm just happy to be here right now. It's again, 4 p.m. on the dot on a Monday, April 20th. I've gotten to say hello to almost everybody in the chat. As people continue to join now, I'm sorry, I won't get to say hello right now, but I'll give you a shout out during the webinar for sure. And any questions that you have throughout this workshop, throughout this presentation, uh, just direct to Kate EO Fire. She's right there in the chat. She's gonna answer any, uh, well, she's gonna take all your questions and make sure that I get them and I will respond to each and every one at the end of this uh, incredible presentation that I put together um, in preparation for social media marketing world, which was just a few weeks ago here in San Diego. And then I followed it up the following week by going out to Phoenix, uh, where I spoke in front of the largest crowd I ever spoke in front of. It was well north of 600 or 700 people in the audience. It was a great audience. Um, I really enjoyed the presentation. And I've just been getting so much great feedback from it. Um, that I couldn't, I can't give the exact same presentation because there are some proprietary things there, but I was able to take the, really the meat and potatoes of my presentations from Social Media Marketing World and from Icon 15. And I'm gonna break it down for you here today. And we're gonna be talking about you, your business, and how you can really ramp up and improve the current funnels that you have in place right now. Um, you hopefully have some funnels in place. If you don't, no worries. This is going to give you a great blueprint for that as well. But what's really key is that I'm going to be taking you through this as a podcaster personally, because that's what I am first and foremost. But you can apply these principles to any niche, to any industry, and you'll see exactly how and why as I take you through this right now, because it is so important to have a funnel, to understand up here what happens when your avatar encounters your brand and the process that they go through to get to the fifth and, and final zone, which will all make sense when I go through this presentation of the five zones. So again, thanks for being awesome. Thanks for being here. I'm gonna flip back over now to um, the actual presentation because I'm about to kick right off. But right before I get dialed in, let me just give a quick hello to some more people that have been joining in. Uh, we have Paul Miller saying, hey, hey. Uh, we have Jennifer Sage saying no volume. Check the volume on the actual video, Jennifer, because you have to make sure on YouTube that it's going. Um, Jerry Mollett's in the house. Alton O. Williams, this is dope. We have Santiago from Columbia. Uh, we have Alyssa Brown, same hat she has, <laughs> love that. Uh, we also have, let's see here, Bob Villoria from Garden Grove, California. We have Jack M from Goodyear, Arizona. Stephen P. Noel saying yes. Roger, Roger. Yep, toggle the sound. Thanks for that, Roger. Appreciate the heads up uh, for our fellow guests. And um, Brian and Courtney are both chatting. But uh, hopefully, hopefully this is uh, coming through strong for everybody. We've got all signs go on our end. And let me just say, first and foremost, welcome Fire Nation to the five zones. That's what we're gonna be chatting about today. Again, I gave these presentations most recently, or and only, I've only given it twice now, at Icon and then at Social Media Marketing World. Again, I, do have to, I did have to change some things up in preparation for talking to you today because there were some proprietary things, but for the most part, what you see is gonna be the meat and potatoes of what I went through that was incredibly well received by well north of a thousand people who were here live at these two talks. And the key takeaway that I want for you today is a funnel for you. This is going to be giving you a blueprint for maybe your first ever funnel, or it's going to be giving you some great aha moments, light bulbs, and epiphanies for a current funnel if you have one at this time. 
So the five zones that we are going to walk through today, and we're actually going to be jogging through them because I value your time. Somebody already said that I think it was dancing with the stars starts in about 55 minutes. So that's my goal, my friends, to get you off for dancing with the stars. The ice zone, the thaw zone, the cozy zone, the on fire zone, and then the trust zone. That's what we're going to be jogging you through here today in a really fun way. But I do want to just share with you my inspiration for creating this presentation that I did, for creating these zones, for massively improving my funnel in an incredibly powerful way. And that is this book, Dot Com Secrets by Russell Brunson. You know, I actually am going to even go ahead and flick on the video real quick again, just because of how like just excited I am about this book. I mean, I have this book by my like computer and I read a ton of books. This is the one that I keep going back to. If I could like just show you all the bookmarks and like doggy years that I have in here. And there's like just so many parts of this that I'm just like going back to over and over again, this physical copy of this book right here, because it has just been a game changer for my business in 2015. And, and again, it was the inspiration for this presentation that I created for these two really huge talks. And it's been a massive revenue generator for Entrepreneur on Fire. Specifically within this book, what I'm going to be focusing on, and I really just see the huge value is the section four, which is the funnels and scripts that Russell goes through. And I love the funnel number four. And in fact, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to be walking you through exactly how I utilize funnel number four, the perfect webinar to generate just under a hundred thousand dollars in one day. And then a total of $156,000 in four days. I'm going to walk you through that exact perfect webinar funnel number four right there. And then also I do have a bonus video training for all of you live attendees that do take action and take advantage of the free dot com book that will get shipped to you for just shipping only $7.95, I'm gonna be sending out a bonus video training to all of you action takers of my funnel number three, which is continuity. So if you want that bonus video, go ahead and click that, click that red button below to snag the dot com secrets book for free plus shipping before that entire offer just evaporates tomorrow night at midnight. It's been going on all month. Tomorrow is the last night. So I mean, like if you're gonna do it, you wanna take action now. So while we're going through this entire five zones, what's really critical is that everybody understands who the avatar for their business is. And if you've been following me, and I know a lot of you have, you know this is one of the things that I harp upon the most because it's so incredibly important. So I'm not gonna go as in depth as I normally do because you've likely seen me go really in depth other places. In fact, it's part of my welcome sequence for my email when you sign up. But I do, for the premise of this, need to lay the foundation of what an avatar is. Okay, an avatar is one perfect listener for your podcast, a perfect reader for your blog, a perfect viewer for your YouTube channel, one single person, not a vague overarching like people, it's one person. And this is my avatar, this is Jimmy. He's 35 years old, he has two kids ages three and five, he drives to work by himself every single day, his commute to work's 27 minutes, he sits in his cubicle for nine hours every single day at a job he doesn't like, he commutes home, it's 32 minute commute home because he gets stuck in traffic, then he gets home, plays with his kids, hangs out with his wife, has dinner with his family, puts his kids to bed, and then he sits on the couch and wonders why he wastes 80% of his waking hours doing things he doesn't enjoy doing, driving to work, hanging out at work. Why does he spend only 10% of his waking hours do, doing what he loves, spending time with his family and friends and kids, and then the other 10% feeling sorry for himself on the couch every single night? Jimmy needs to be listening to Entrepreneur on Fire every morning as he drives to work, hearing those failure stories, every afternoon as he's driving home, hearing those aha moments. So Jimmy can start to piece together the puzzle of his entrepreneurial journey. This is my avatar, my friends. I know him inside and out. So every single fork in the road that I come to as a business owner is not on my shoulders. I don't, I don't take that on. I don't take on the time, energy, bandwidth, and money. No, I pass it off to Jimmy and I say WWJD, 
What would Jimmy do? And then boom, I have my answer because I know Jimmy. I created him. And then I'm off to the races, left, right, left, left, right, at those forks in the road every single time. And what's so critical is that we try to make decisions in our business when we shouldn't be making those decisions because I am not the avatar of Entrepreneur on Fire. So why should I personally be deciding things about the business? No, I need to know what my avatar wants. And then that is the direction that I take because that's what I have the podcast for, for my listeners. It's not for myself. So once you have this down, my friends, and once you know who your avatar is, it is such a just relief, such a weight off of your shoulders because the decisions no longer lie with you. They lie with your perfectly crafted avatar who can evolve. Absolutely. So now I do want to be clear. I'm going to go through the five zones right now. I'm going through them as a podcaster, but as I said in the pre-interview chat, and also again, for anybody that may have joined later, I'm going to be going through this as a podcaster, but this applies to any industry, any niche, no matter what you do currently. If you're a blogger, YouTuber, um, internet marketer, I mean anything, you can brick and mortar. This applies to anybody, but I'm going to show you how I, as a podcaster, take my avatar through these five zones, and you can take these same principles, apply the same blueprint to your avatar and going through your business and going through your five zones. So zone number one is that ice zone. Now, why is it called the ice zone? It's because your avatar, who's out there, by the way, in the droves by hundreds and thousands, they've never heard of you. They have never heard of you. So they are currently in the ice zone. And you know what? That's okay. Because your next step is to be where they are. Now think about that for a second. Where are your current avatars right now for your business? You only know the answer to that question if you've actually sat down and crafted that one perfect avatar. And once you have, you have the answers to this. If you haven't done this, how do you even know where to start? How do you even know where your perfect person is if you don't even know who that perfect person is? So be where they are. And for a podcaster, that's iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, now Spotify, Really, really exciting just the growth and direction that podcasting's taken and where me as a podcast host can leverage these massive directories. iTunes alone has 525 million active users. They're going to these directories every single day and they're searching for content. And if you're not there, they're not finding you. But guess what? These directories exist so you can be there. So what are these directories that exist for you if you're not a podcaster? What do what, what are they? If you're a blogger, where should you be? If you're a you know video, you should be on YouTube. You know, you should be on Wis, you should be on all these different great platforms that are out there. So you need to be where your avatar is. And then you need to be ranking for those keywords. 45 million people are searching the iTunes search bar every single month. Entrepreneur on fire is the number two result for the word entrepreneur. You better believe that that drives a ton of organic traffic to me every single day when a certain proportion of those 45 million people that are searching iTunes every single month are searching for the word entrepreneur. When they find me and they listen, I am where they are. They are finding me. And the barriers in my industry, podcasting, are completely being shattered. It used to be tough to actually listen to a podcast. Now it's like you just go ahead and it's on your smartphone, which is tethered to everybody's hip 24 seven. You jump in your car, you turn your car on, Apple CarPlay's on the dashboard, Android Auto, uh, Stitcher dashboard, it is all right there for you. The barriers have been shattered. So what barriers are being shattered in your industry right now that you can take advantage of? So now we're moving into the thaw zone because now your avatar, guess what? They've heard of you now. They found you because you went to where they are. And that's such a critical step. So the thaw zone is a great zone because your avatar knows that you are speaking directly to them. Why? Because you took the time, you sat down, you crafted an avatar, that one perfect listener, and then you crafted your podcast to suit the needs 
the wants, the desires of that avatar. So you are speaking directly to your avatar. And they're going to say, this is crazy. I feel like this podcast, this blog, this video was created just for me. How is that even possible? You are entering into the thaw zone with them because not only now have they heard of you, but it's like you're speaking directly to them. So now they're going to take that next step and they're going to subscribe. They're going to rate. They're going to review your podcast. You know, they're going to tweet. They're going to make comments on your blog post. You know, they're going to share your videos. They're going to do these things in the thaw zone because they're like, wow, this resonates with me. I want to thank this person by rating them, by reviewing them, by just doing the things that I know are going to be helpful to them. That's going to improve your organic results and rankings. That's going to improve the, the way that people find you. Just like we love listening to top 40 music, boom, you go, people go and search for podcasts by top 40 podcasts in different categories. And if you have the ratings, the subscriptions, the reviews, you're going to be up there and be found much more frequently. And now your avatar wants more. They want more from you because you're speaking directly to them. And they love that. They can't get enough of that. And so you need to do this next step. And this is where the ingredients come into play that, again, work 100% for podcasting, but work just as well in any other industry, in any other niche, and that is FVC. Foxtrot, Victor, Charlie from my army guy Kent out there, provide these three ingredients. Ingredient number one is free. Free. You haven't yet proven to this person that you are 100% a person of value. So they're not going to reach into their wallet, take out hard-earned money, and pay for something when you really haven't proven that you can provide value yet. So this first key ingredient is always going to be free. It has to be. And that's why podcasting is awesome and blogs and videos on YouTube. The nature of these platforms is free, and that's incredibly exciting. So number two is valuable. Now I want to be very specific here because value is relative. When I launched Entrepreneur on Fire, I was not capable of providing value because I was a newbie entrepreneur. I was a newbie podcaster. I was a, you know, not a good host. I was not a good interviewer. And I was a clueless and inexperienced and knowledge free, <laughs> meaning lacking any knowledge in entrepreneurship. I was learning as much or more as any of my listeners were. So I couldn't provide value, but guess what? I had an interview-based show, so I made sure that I had guests on my show that could provide value. So value is relative. I've now got to the point at episode 913 that I can provide value on my podcast to add to what my guest is sharing. So now we can combine and make the show overall better by both providing value. But even though I wasn't able to provide value at the beginning, that's okay because I was able to bring on authority figures with credibility who could give value in a really powerful way. And that is a great place to start. So think of these things when you're providing this free, valuable content. Now, this third ingredient, I'm telling you straight off, this is where 99% of the population goes wrong. It is consistent. You need consistency to be part of these three ingredients. If you don't have consistency, you can be free and valuable all you want, but you're never going to make it into the next zone that I'm really excited to dive into. Why? Because you're not going to be doing the things it takes to get into the next zone, the trust, the knowing, the liking that I'm going to be talking about coming up here in a second in the cozy zone. So if you can provide these three key ingredients, free, valuable, and consistent to your avatar, and consistent, again, just like, just like value is relative, consistent is not a specific number. Once a day, that is consistent, absolutely. That's one reason why Entrepreneur on Fire is so successful. Once a week is consistent, as long as it's the same day that week, so your, your listener, your reader can get into a rhythm twice a month, once a month, three times a week. It's what decision you make for consistency 
It well, let me say this. It's not the decision that you make for how often you're going to have this consistency. It's the fact that you stick to your stated plan so that your listener can get on that rhythm. That's where the importance lies. And always be vocal, always be communicative every step of the way. Okay, so now we've reached that cozy zone. And this is exactly where things start to get fun because. Man, I mean, who doesn't like being all snuggled up next to a fireplace on a cold Maine or New Hampshire winter evening? Nobody. Because now your avatar has been listening for a while. They have been hearing your voice, reading your words, seeing your face on video. This trust is now starting to form. It's just starting, but it is starting to form because you've been providing them with free, valuable, and consistent content for a while. You've been creating it for what they feel like is them because it's just perfect for them. They love it because you're creating it for them. They're the avatar. And the power of voice within podcasting really takes over here. This is where some intense and powerful intimacy really can occur. Because even before we're born, as humans, we connect with voice. We're hearing our mother's voice as she's talking out and she's, and she's, the, the voice tremors are vibrating within. We're resonating with that voice. You know, when, when we're first born, it is already shown that we have recognition of our mother's voice above anything else. One of the first connections for us as humans in the real world, world is voice. And that intimacy of voice never goes away. And so I get emails all the time from people that say, John, John, it's, it's, I know it's, it's so weird because I live in Scotland or Colombia or Buenos Aires. And I know I've never seen you, but I feel like I know you because I listen to you every morning as I'm driving to work, as I'm exercising, as I'm walking my dog, folding my laundry. And I write back and I say, you know, it's not weird, Naisha. It's not strange that you feel like you know me because I listen to podcasts and I've never met some of the hosts and I feel like I know them because they're in my earbuds as I'm running along the bay here. They're coming through my car speakers as I'm driving downtown. They are just right there and that power of the voice, the connection that you can have is so powerful and really solidifies your place in this cozy zone. So now your avatar is willing to recommend to their friends, albeit cautiously. And this is critical because, listen, we all know, like, for instance, this is a great example. We have somebody in here that's excited that in about 30 minutes or more like 40 minutes, Dancing with the Stars starts. Well, when she first saw Dancing with the Stars, she was like, oh, my God, this is a great show. But at the same time, she was a little cautious to just scream it to the world because what if the rest of the world like was just like, this show is horrible. Like nobody wants to look silly or be foolish or be an outcast. You know, so when people first heard Entrepreneur on Fire and they got into the cozy zone, they were wanting to recommend it to their friends because they loved it, but they didn't want their friends to be like, dude, what are you doing? This is like such a waste of time. You could be listening to Miley Cyrus on the radio like every four song. And, you know, that is a very transitional period for your avatars within this zone because they don't want to look foolish. But, you know, when this person who is in the chat right now and, and you know, she goes to work and then three or four days later, everybody's raving about Dancing with the Stars, she feels pretty comfortable to chime on in and profess her love for it as well because now it is part of the movement. But you're not quite there yet in the cozy zone. But one key thing is for sure, your avatar is ready for more. Your avatar is ready for you to prove yourself at this point to them so that you can take them to my personal favorite zone for obvious reasons. <laughs> the on fire zone. Now the on fire zone is when your avatar has officially graduated and now is an evangelist. They are screaming from the rooftops. Everybody that they meet that they even think might even on some level think that entrepreneur on fire or dancing with the stars is a good podcast. They it's proven to them. It's proven to peers that they peers that that person respects like it. They know that this is the real deal. And now they're, they're, they're saying, you know what? If you don't like this, that's on you. 
that's not on me because I know the value of this program. I know the value of the show, this podcast that John puts out every single day. And if you don't get that, well, that's your loss, but I'm still going to be proud that I listen and that I learn and that I engage and that I am part of Fire Nation. That is when your avatar has reached the on fire zone. And this, my friends, this is when you take a critical step because now the host, the host of the podcast, me, the creator of the video channel, the writer of the blog must ask this incredibly important question. What are you struggling with right now? What are you struggling with right now? Now, there's a couple really important things about this. A lot of people might say, well, John, how do you know when to ask this question? Well, when you are the creator of a brand, when you are, have a podcast, when you have a blog, you know when people have reached the on fire zone because of the social media shares, the, the retweets, the emails you get from them, the comments that you get, all of these different things, the emails you get from people that have been recommended by that person, you know your on fire avatars. You know them. And if you aren't sure if that's an on fire avatar, well, guess what? They're not an on fire avatar yet because you will know. But then once you do know that, once this person has just proven themselves to an absolute undeniable degree to be in the on fire zone, they have really reached this point where you need to ask them the question, what are you struggling with right now? And then you just listen. You step back and you listen to what they are struggling with because this is where the avatar, your perfect on fire avatar is going to share their pain, their obstacles, their challenges. And then you, the host, provide the solution. Now, this is where it really gets exciting and interesting. A product, service, and or community will come out of this pain point, of this problem, that is the solution that you are going to create. It all comes out of that one question that you ask them, what are you struggling with right now? So I'm gonna give you three examples of exactly what we have done here at Entrepreneur on Fire when we've walked our avatars through these first four zones and they've gone to the on fire zone. Well, example number one is Fire Nation Elite. I was getting a ton, a ton of great questions and pain points and obstacles and just suggestions from my on fire listeners saying, John, 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 I want more access to you. I want more access to other Fire Nation listeners who are the elite Fire Nation listeners that are out there because I know I'm the average of the five people I spend the most time with. And I live in Springfield, Illinois, and there's nobody around here that I feel like improves my average enough. I need to be part of a mastermind. I want to be surrounded by like-minded people who are at a high level. My Listen, my avatars that were on fire were saying this enough that I listened and I created the solution. And that solution was back in June of 2013, and it was the form of Fire Nation Elite, a mastermind on fire. It's a membership mastermind, and we have now up to, up to 100 people, we cap it at 100, who are paying $200 a month to be part of this mastermind. So this from day one has been a five-figure recurring revenue stream for us here at Entrepreneur on Fire, all because I identified my on-fire avatars. I asked them the, that question, the ever most important question. I listened, and then I created the solution for them, Fire Nation Elite. Number two, I did 60 live webinars in 2014 alone. We've slowed things down a little bit in 2015 because we've amped up the automated webinars. But in 2014, it was every single week. And people were saying, John, how are you creating and presenting webinars that are converting so gosh darn well so often? And when I first heard that, you know, it was nice. But when my on fire avatar started asking these questions, then I knew I had a product on my hands. 
and that turned into Webinar on Fire. Since then, we've brought in over 300 people into Webinar on Fire. It's generated over $250,000 in revenue, and it hasn't even celebrated its one-year anniversary yet. That is asking the right question, listening in a great way, and then providing the solution. And then our flagship program is, of course, Podcasters Paradise. This is the community, the number one podcasting community in the world where people come to create, grow, and monetize their own podcasts. We launched this back in October of 2013, and since then we brought in over 2,200 members into Podcasters Paradise, generating north of $2.4 million. And when I first launched Entrepreneur on Fire, even a year into it, I never knew I was gonna be creating a podcasting community that taught people how to podcast. I thought my first big product was gonna be in business. I was interviewing business entrepreneurs. That was where I thought I was going. But my on fire avatars were asking me, John, how do I create my podcast? How do I grow my audience? How do I monetize and rank in iTunes and launch in the best way? So I listened to them and created the solution to their pain points, to their obstacles, to their challenges, and it is something that continues to generate over one to two and sometimes over $300,000 in revenue every single month. So now we're entering into the trust zone because you have crafted your perfect avatar. You've listened to them. You, you went to where they were. You took them all the way through these five zones, and then you created the products and the services in the communities that, that they asked for. So guess what? You've now taken them into the final zone, which is the trust zone, because you've proven to them that not only do you provide value, not only do you listen to them, but you provide solutions to their problems. So once you've entered the trust zone, the trust is just 100%. Your avatars are simply waiting for your next offer, all you need to do is craft it. And of course, how you do craft it, you listen to your avatars who are gonna be talking to you more than ever because they know you're listening. For me, the trust zone, this is Fire Nation. This is you who are on this webinar right now. Like, let's look at over 170 people that are live. We have Dylan uh, Malise in the house. We have Derek Bugley, a Providence College alumnus coming at us, go Friars. Derek, I love, love your new business, by the way, buggle.com, B-U-G-G-L.com. You got some great things going on. Jason Benavides is saying, yeah, buddy. Uh, Dylan, you're talking a lot, buddy. I like it. Way to be active. We have uh, Joe Ellen, Jennifer Sage, Jake Widman, Nathan Lieberman, uh, Robert Martin, Steve Noel, Orange Drum, uh, Santis Webb. All you guys are just chatting away, loving it. And this is you. This is Fire Nation. And you are now in the trust zone because of the fact that I've walked the avatars of my audience through these five zones. So let's kind of go through them right now because again, you start with that ice zone where your avatar doesn't know you. You need to be where your avatar is. For me, that was iTunes. For me, that was Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, Spotify. For you, that's going to be that if you're a podcaster or other places if you're something else. The thaw zone, this is where you're actually resonating with your avatar for the first time because you know who your avatar is and you're creating content specifically for them. Then the cozy zone, they are all cozied up because man, they are really starting to build some trust for you. And then it's the on fire zone where you start engaging them, asking them for their problems, their pain points, creating that solution for them, and then offering it to them in the in the form of a product, service, or a community to the trust zone, which is the final zone of once you've successfully offered them and converted them into those products, services, and communities. So as I shared at the top, I was gonna take you through the perfect webinar funnel, which is within section four of Russell Brunson's dot-com secrets. So what I wanna break, break it down right now is the power of free, because this is exactly what the perfect webinar focuses on, is free. So I wanna take you through what exactly the power of free means, because I had a pretty controversial shift 
in early 2015. Again, Podcasters Paradise, over 2,200 members to date that was launched in October of 2013, over $2.4 million in revenue to date. Things were going amazing with Podcasters Paradise, but in early 2015, I said, you know, it's not cheap. It's $1,200 to, to become a lifetime member of Podcasters Paradise. I want to remain the authority figure in podcasting. I want to continue to give value to podcast hopefuls out there. What can I do to do so? And I really sat down and I thought about it and I thought about the power of free. And so despite a lot of people advising against it, I created freepodcastcourse.com. It is what it sounds. It's a 100% free 15-day course on how to create, grow, and monetize your own podcast. I went a step further and I created thewebinarcourse.com, a completely free 10-day course on how to create and present webinars that convert. Because I knew the power of free thanks to how Russell broke it down in that section within this funnel. And this is what it looked like. It looked like this. The free podcast course was now open to the public. It was now out there that you could opt in to this course via email and get these emails over the course of 15 days. So email opt-in, 15 daily emails. And these emails brought you through the entire course of creating, growing, and monetizing your podcast. It was a complete course. There was no open loop at the ends. Like, oh, if you want to learn this next thing, you must join Paradise. Absolutely not. It was a complete course, standalone, completely free in and of itself. A lot of people said, John, this is going to cannibalize Podcasters Paradise. The opposite thing happens. When people said, John, this is going to and you know, anybody who was going to join paradise, they're just now going to join free podcast course and you've lost that sale. And you know, in my heart of hearts, I knew that wasn't going to be the case. And it was so true that it was not the case. In fact, the opposite did happen because this course spread like wildfire. We've had 9,663 signups to date within free podcast course. That is 5x what we've had within Podcasters Paradise since October of 2013. And this is only since January of 2015. So in just three months, we've had 5x the sales of something that we've had open for 16 months. So as you can see, getting stuff out there in a free format can be powerful, but there's a next step to this process. And that's what I call the paradise push. So about one month ago, we, I was doing a little power walk here around the bay and I decided to do a price raise of Podcasters Paradise. We're always adding value. We always like to have the, the value reflect. Um, the, we like, always like to have the investment of Paradise reflect the value within. So since we're always adding to value, we decided to increase the price itself. And I said, how can I do this in a powerful way with this new massive opt-in list, this new massive audience that I have within free podcast course. So I thought about it for a while and I decided on eight emails in four days. That morning email was going to be alerting. Oh yeah. It was only marketed to the free podcast course list, by the way, this is the only list that I marketed it to. And I just alerted them of the price range of the price raise. So in the morning, that first morning, I just said, Hey, the price of paradise is going up tonight at midnight and the price is going to be up forever. It's not going back down. We're also going to be having a diminishing bonus each and every day. So day one, you can join for the lowest price you're ever going to be able to join for. And you're going to be able to get a 10 minute chat with me if you join today. And that was the diminishing bonus because the second day it was, it's going up another $25 and you can get an audio bumper from me. The third day, a t-shirt from me, and so on. So a diminishing bonus. In day one alone, from that free podcast course list, we did 81 sales of a $1,200 product. Day one alone, it was just, people were right there. They just needed that little push 
And that's exactly what this paradise push did. But the only reason they were there is because they had all gone through a 15 day free course where I had delivered, delivered so much value and they were now ready for more. Day 223, day uh, 317, day 424 sales. Total sales over those four days totaled $156,000, all from a free course that I created with 15 emails, 15 video tutorials, teaching people how to create, grow, and monetize their own podcast. A lot of them went through it, launched their podcast, and loved it. And a lot of them said, I want more. I want the community aspect of paradise. I want the, the, the monthly webinars with top podcasters like Tim Ferriss, Chris Brogan, James Altucher. I want the monthly Q and A sessions with John. I want all of that stuff. I need more. There's 200 video tutorials. I only got 15 in this free podcast course. I'm ready to make this happen. That was the result of following this perfect webinar formula funnel by starting with free. But of course, <clears throat> and this is key, You've seen how I've taken you down this. I already had a proven product. That proven product was Podcasters Paradise. You can't do the free part first because there's nothing for you to push people into, uh, the paradise push. So this is the steps to take. Prove that concept, prove that product, service, and community, and then you double back with the power of free. So you can create this funnel in your industry for your audience, hands down. This is a proven formula for any niche, for any industry. If you follow the steps, if you know the ingredients, if you understand what needs to happen when. So I kind of want to leave with this before I jump into some questions. So if you guys have any questions, Now's the time to hit Kate up with those questions because I'm going to be answering them one by one by one. Um, that is what I'm here for, for some live Q and a, you know, I promised to get everybody out of here before dancing with the stars. I know we have 19 minutes for that. So I'm going to give enough time for some live Q and a <clears throat> Q and a, excuse me, but I do want to leave you with this quote. If you want to be do. It's really that simple. Whenever you get nervous or you try to complicate things, come back to this quote. If you want to be, do. Now, how do, would this apply to, to my journey in just the last two and a half years, which is all it's been, by the way, since I launched Entrepreneur on Fire? I wanted to be a podcaster. I had to flip in podcast. There was no two ways about it. I couldn't go off and you know go water skiing and surfing and expect to become a podcaster. No, if you want to be X, do X. There's no Y, there's no Z. This is not a crazy math problem. This is simple statements. If you want to be, do. I wanted to be a podcaster, I had to podcast. And I podcasted for a really long time, really not well. Like not well, I knew it. I was an inexperienced, never broadcast, never interviewed anybody. I was starting from square one, but I knew if I wanted to become a podcaster, I had to podcast. Michael Jordan did not hit his first free throw. Tiger Woods did not hit a hole in one on his first swing. They wanted to be X, so they did X. So what is it that you really want to do in this world? And ask yourself truthfully, are you doing it every single day? day because that's the only way you're going to get good at that thing that you want to be. So it's just, I mean, something you need to keep coming back to, something I continue to come back to over and over again. So my friends, now it's Q&A time. I'm here to take your questions and I'm just, you know, really just stoked with the amount of people that we had on this live webinar. Um, I'm going to kind of go through here. We have Johnny Griffin in the house, Dylan still chatting away, Ivanka, uh, Mike O'Toole loves the transparency around EO Fire. Thanks, Mike. We appreciate you. Steve Noel, um, Dylan, Johnny, Mike O'Toole again. Let's go. Uh, Char Nee in the house. Mel Abraham, um, Derek Bugley. Love your question, buddy. I'll get to that. Um, Santis Webb, Juliet The Well. Uh, wow, just great people. W.R. Fisherman. Uh, Sharni, Melinda, still chatting away. You guys are great. So I'm going to answer some questions now. Um, 
Actually, you know, yeah, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Let me take a quick sip of water. Okay, I'm back. So Mel has a question. Will there be slides that we can get a copy of? Absolutely, Mel. We will be providing these slides uh, to people that sign up for this webinar. So just hang tight. Um, Johnny says, <laughs> Johnny, great question. Um, he's doing my $500 question from EO Fire. Um, so I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. I'll give a quick, quick answer to this because we'll, we'll get into the other questions. But basically, I would use that $500 to throw a networking party with food, with drink, um, with music. I partner up with a local restaurant and we would invite the top entrepreneurs in the area. I would stand at the door. I'd introduce myself every single time um, that people were coming in the door. And I would say, hey, I'm John Lee Dumas. I'm the host of this party. I look forward to catching up with you in the party. Then after everybody came in, I spend the rest of the time going around and introducing myself and setting up coffees for the rest of that week. Mike says, with the growth that podcasting is poised for, does that help someone starting a podcast today or does it increase the chance you'll be drowned out by the competition? Mike, it absolutely helps somebody that's starting a podcast today. You just have to find your vertical. You have to find your, ni your niche. You have to really be willing to get that unique selling proposition nailed in, know your avatar, and know what your podcast is meant to be. Gone are the days where the vague podcasts that are just about broad topics, those are having tough times, but the podcasts that, that are really specified and really dialed down, those are still having massive success because of the amount of listeners and consumers that are pouring in. Mike says, John, I get the strategy to offer as much free and valuable content as possible. What's the strategy behind all your transparency? Accelerating your trust with your avatar. Mike, great question. And I'm going to be transparent about my transparency. I was, I'm an army guy, okay? Like I come from serving our country as a second lieutenant, fighting a war in Iraq. Then I went to law school. Then I went to corporate finance. I was Mr. Traditional. And the problem with that was I really didn't trust the online internet world. It seemed kind of scammy to just like this traditional patriot that I was. But the reality is I logged on one day, was doing some searching, found Pat Flynn, who was sharing his income reports. And I said, here's a great guy who is doing nothing but adding value to this world in a great transparent way and talking about it. I trust him. Now I trust for the first time that you can do something cool in this podcast, in this online space without having to be scammy. And I said to myself at that same time, if I ever get to the point where I'm generating those kind of numbers and that revenue, I want to be that shining light for people as well to let them know that there is a way to show them my success that can be emulated as well as my failures that can be avoided. Derek says, what vertical do you think podcasting is ripe for dis disruption? I, uh, Derek, I think it's an amazing question, but then again, being the founder of Buggle.com, you only ask the, gr the great questions, my friends. <laughs> podcasting vertical that's so ripe is in the uh, vertical of a, an actual author, somebody that's written a book. The, the marketing techniques for authors right now is absolutely miserable. They just go through the exact same old ways of traditional marketing that doesn't work anymore. Why aren't the authors out there publishing chapters of their book with commentaries and then maybe you know publishing a second chapter but then taking the first chapter away and so they're just continuously being able to reach this amazing audience that's consuming the content via audio that's getting drawn in and then boom, they're gonna wanna buy that book, they're gonna want to get more access to everything that that person has, that author is writing about, and that's a great way to draw people in. So you're gonna see authors, I believe, start to dip their toe into podcasting in a completely free, transparent, and extra ac access type of way. You know, like how you have those shows where it's the trailers with the commentary from the directors, that's what there's gonna be podcasts about for authors. Dylan says, what online marketing channels give you the um, highest ROI? Well, definitely um, podcasting gives incredible ROI for me and a lot of other people who are podcasting well and right. Facebook advertising is giving incredible ROI right now. So you can really market to your avatars because you can get so specific. So I love Facebook advertising for that reason. Um, and Dylan, those are like two areas that I've really focused in 2015 on. 
Um, we got we have some more great questions uh, pouring in. Um, let me uh, take one from WR Fisherman. Any special tips on helping those Bing listeners that just found you, if not a daily podcast, when they run when they run back um, content to listen to? How to keep them? Oh, when they run out of back content to listen to, how to keep them intrigued? Uh, great question. I'm not sure how anybody from Bing is finding anybody. I didn't know that was an actual search engine that still got used, but just kidding. Um, the great thing you want to do is use your intro and out outro, WR Fisherman, to really get specific that, hey, this is my frequency. This is my consistency. This is when you're going to get the podcast episodes. If you want more, you have to go to xyz.com. Sign up for my newsletter list. Sign up for updates. Do this, do that. You know, subscribe to my Twitter handle. Make sure that they know they can get involved with you because if they're listening to your podcast and they want more, give them the avenues where they can where they can engage with you more. Jennifer says, "How often do you repeat a topic on your podcast? New guest, same topic." Jennifer, it's interesting. I don't think you should be afraid of repeating a topic when you have different guests because they're going to always give a unique and different perspective. My podcast is different where I always focus on the journey of the entrepreneur. And so because I, I focus on the journey, um, <clears throat> excuse me, because I focus on the journey, it's always completely different. So I rarely get the same topics over and over again, but um, I wouldn't be afraid of the same topics coming up as long as you know that those topics align with your avatar because you're going to be getting different perspectives. Ivanka says, going from free to paid, is it, is it a numbers game or is there a trick to improve conversion? Ivanka, it's not a numbers game, it's a value game. If you can provide enough value to tip those scales, then you're going to improve your conversion. So because free podcast course and the webinar course were such standalone products in and of themselves, they were able to tip the scales. And so guys, <clears throat> oh, he said binge, not bing. <laughs> WR Fisherman. I knew there was something wrong about someone saying bing. I'm like, come on, bing. That's pretty funny. Uh, guys, there's some more questions, but you know, as people are kind of wrapping up and going off into their evenings, I do want to make, you know, a very strong pledge to this book. Um, this is the book that inspired what you just saw, that presentation, and inspired those massive revenue numbers have inspired the way of thinking. You know, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants. So I never, never afraid of giving credit where credit is due. And this guy deserves credit. This book deserves credit. It's going to be, you know, my Bible for 2015. So, you know, I really want to make sure that Fire Nation does take advantage of the free offer of this physical book um, with the $8 shipping um, and handling that is included um, as well. If you click that red button below, um, you can snag that book right now. It's going to come to your doorstep. And be, if because you're an action taker, you're going to get an additional video training from me on funnel number three, continuity. So definitely keep your eyes out on that because action takers um, who grab this book and who I know are going to improve their 2015 business are going to absolutely uh, be off to the races with that um, alter, alt alternate video training. So uh, let's go back now to the slide and let me hit up the last few questions that we have here. Uh, we have, where was Ivanka's question? Richard says, what's your best advice for a, be for a beginner when it comes to finding that niche, that vertical, any tips? Yes, absolutely, Richard. What you want to do is, okay, and this is kind of a more detailed um, response than I, I'm going to get into, but definitely come and, and watch one of my free podcast workshops. I get into this really in depth, but it comes down to this exercise of taking out a piece of paper on the left hand, you know, drawing a line down the middle on the left hand side, having your passions on your right hand side, um, having your um, expertise, your skills, and writing those down for five consecutive days, sitting down and writing as much as you can in both of those sections. You're going to see how that progresses over the course of three, four, five days. By day five, you're going to be coming up with things you didn't even know were in your mind. And then you're going to start to see an overlap, which is your zone of genius. And that is where you start, Richard, that zone of genius, where your passions and expertise overlap. Joe Ellen says, best book you recommend to decide on what idea to pursue? Uh, Joe Ellen, there's a great book called The One Thing by Gary Keller. 
definitely recommend it. Ronnie says, John, I'm getting ready to retool and relaunch my current podcast. I want to create an awesome free call to action. What do you think about offering a webinar and on that webinar, inviting attendees to share what they are challenged by over a free special report or ebook? Rodney, I love that idea because you're going to be getting their emails. You're going to be getting um, the trust built by you providing that value. It is a great idea. Rudolph says, in your experience, John, what are two steps? Um, what two steps must a new entrepreneur take on how to get to the next level? Uh, two steps, Rudolph, that an entrepreneur needs to take to get to the next level. It depends what level that entrepreneur currently is. Um, but let's just say that they're maybe leaning more towards the beginner side. Step number one is reach out to your current audience, no matter how small it is, and ask if you can have an actual conversation with those people, with whoever's willing to. Do what doesn't scale, says Brad Feld of Y Combinator. Literally, my friends, if you can have those conversations with your listeners right now, no matter how few or many they are, it's worth the weight and goal because that is going to be shaping just the future of your business. And if I had to say a second step, learn on uh, learn social media advertising. I would definitely focus on Facebook and I'd maybe even consider dipping your toe into YouTube right now because that is going to be the next big thing for sure. It is worth it um, as an entrepreneur to know these mediums because they are a great way to amplify your business. Jeff says, should I get started and improve along the way or should I wait until things are almost perfect? Jeff, it's like I paid you to ask this question. You need to start right now. The founder of LinkedIn, Reed Hoffman said, let me get this quote correct right now. Um, if, if you, let me say this one more time. Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, he said, if your product is perfect, you waited way too long to ship. Way too long. And that's true, Jeff, that's true on every single level. And that's not a perfect quote of that. I don't know why I'm having kind of a brain freeze on it, but Reed Hoffman's basically saying, if your product is even close to perfect, you waited way too long. You need to get that product out there, get feedback from your customers. You really, really need to just make sure that you are having your product service, whatever it is, podcast, blog, in the hands of your listeners so that they can help you craft it because you are not the person that's going to be crafting what becomes a, an acceptable model of whatever you're doing. Your listeners, your readers, your viewers are going to. Uh, Gomel says, how do you find your genius zone? What things have you done to do it? Uh, so I, I did that exact strategy that I talked about just a second ago about writing down my passions and my expertise, but doing it for five days consistently, five consecutive days. Ask your friends, your family, your loved ones. Say, when you look at me, what would you say my skills are? If someone wants to say, hey, what's John good at? Hey, what does John love? How would you answer those questions? And those make the addition as well. So Gomos, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but you need to sit down and exercise your brain with this creative exercise because you'll be surprised what's in it. Santiago says, I'm, I'm planning a pre-launch coming soon campaign for my startup. Any strategy or advice for this stage of business? Absolutely, Santiago. Start doing webinars. Um, which again, I have a completely free course, thewebinarcourse.com, where you are giving value that you're going to be giving when you actually do launch, but you're going to be giving a portion of that, of that value during the webinar, getting interest, getting email subscribers, growing an interest list so that when the start comes, you are ready to press that red button and go. Paul says, it seems like all the really big money-making people in the internet uh, biz are typically selling, well, internet business products. Do you have any good examples of people making a million plus per year doing um, a niche besides internet biz stuff? Yeah, Paul, this is a great question, and we have a couple good examples for you right now. Shane and Jocelyn of Flip Your Life, like that's, Kate, maybe you can um, give the exact domain in the, in the chat but it's something like flipped lifestyle, something like that. But here you have Shane. He's a football coach at a high school. He sells football plays online to other um, football coaches around the world. You have Jocelyn, who's his wife, who's a librarian. She sells li uh, librarian templates and other things on how to teach library. I don't know what exactly she does. 
I did have them on the show. Um, I know a little bit about what they do, but they make over a hundred thousand dollars a month. So they are into the seven figure by far by quite a bit. And that's by doing what they have expertise in. And guess what? They're also passionate about those topics. So they found their zone of genius. So Kate, go ahead and drop the link to Shane and Jocelyn. They're a great example of people who are doing it seven figures. That's not internet business stuff. Um, <clears throat> Mel says, I know you're using FB ads. Are you doing other ads on platforms? Um, yes, Mel, I'm doing YouTube ads as well. And I'm actually having quite a bit of success there using the true view platform. Steven says, what do you think about a podcast focus on people's student loan stories and their journey out of debt? People need the inspiration to get themselves out of the hole. They dug 1.3 trillion. I just finished paying off a ton of debt under four years. No debts. Congratulations. I love discipline and the ability to hit goals. Steven, amazing idea, amazing accomplishment. Congratulations. Dave Ramsey is somebody that's proven that people will never get tired of hearing about this. He's had his show for like 10 years where people just call in and talk about their debt problems. I'm sure you've listened to it being somebody that was passionate about this. There is a wide open market for this. Be your voice in this. You have a different personality than Dave Ramsey. You're going to attract different people for different reasons. Get it out there. Tony says, I have over 50 sales videos. Could I use those for a free sales course? Absolutely, Tanya. Package it up in an email course so people have to opt in via email, deliver it via email, and boom, you have your free course. I mean, I probably would take like the top 15, at most 20, and then I would go to the, I'd go to the races on those, and that could be a great free course. Uh, Nicole says, does anything change with the process when you are selling a service versus a product when hosting? Um, no, Nicole, nothing really changes. I will say you need to realize that if you are selling a service, what kind of scale and leverage that you have as an individual, because sometimes a service does take you, it does take some one-on-one, -on -one. it's not as scalable or leverageable as a product, but the process is still the same. Dapper says, how did you decide when to start outsourcing some of the work on EOF in the early days? Uh, Dapper, I was fortunate. I, I, I launched at 32 with no debt, thanks to my army scholarship, thanks to some very prudent savings. I had you know, just about $100,000 in savings. So I was able personally to launch with a VA day one, but there's a great book. And Kate, if you want to drop it in <clears throat> the chat, um, it's called Virtual Freedom by Chris Ducker, a great friend of mine. Actually, I had dinner with him two nights ago here in San Diego. He's visiting with his family. Virtual Freedom is the book that will walk you through the best ways for you to know and decide how and when to start outsourcing some of your work at your business. Virtual Freedom, it's a game changer. So guys, we still have over 145 people on. Um, Derek is saying, hey, John and Kate, I have to run for a dev meeting. It's great listening. Everyone on here listening to John's advice, a great book and a short read is Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea, Zappos founder. I couldn't agree more. And uh, guys, I want to give a little, little plug to my friend here who's just uh, a great guy on his own account. He's been a good friend for a long time. He has a great um, little startup business of his own. If anybody likes traveling, you definitely want to check out Buggle dot com. A little play off his name there, Buggle dot com. I'll drop the link uh, right there in the chat room for sure. Um, but Derek, thanks for sticking around. Definitely recommend uh, people reading that book, Delivering Happiness. And let's see here. Oh yeah, Chris Ducker. Yeah, people are all caught uh, chatting about Chris and what a great guy he is. Uh, Rudolph says, let's go Rangers. If that's the New York Rangers, Rudolph, you're a hockey fan. And that means that you must be proud of the Providence Friars for being college division one national hockey champions. <laughs> oh, so listen, my friends, I will, uh, it looks like that was the last question by Dapper. So I'm going to flip on the video here and just give a little, uh, a little farewell and say, thank you each and every one of you for joining me for the last hour, um, on this webinar. Got a lot of great questions. Hope you enjoyed. Um, really hope that you got something out of those five zones. Hope you got uh, fired up enough to get this book because I want nothing but success for you, Fire Nation. And I know that that's going to be a key step in your journey as it was for mine. 
Um, so again, just thank you for taking action, for being here on relatively short notice. I sent this email out at like 11 a.m. this morning, and here we are just a handful of hours later. You know, we almost had 200 people on at the high point. So you're awesome. Hope you got value out of this. Let me know if you like this kind of stuff. I might start doing more of this, but it all depends on you, Fire Nation. I'm here to serve, and I will catch everybody on the flip side.